Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about Dynamic Skipfire, which is a technology which seeks to improve the efficiency of engines. Now the interesting thing about it is the larger your engine, the more cylinders your engine has, uh, the greater the effect that this has. Now that's not to say that smaller engines aren't more efficient. They tend to be more efficient, they tend to get better fuel economy numbers. So this technology isn't going to make, you know, an already super efficient, small, compact engine more efficient, but it will bring a larger engine closer to those fuel economy numbers. So that's the goal with this technology. And essentially what it does is it gives you fully variable cylinder deactivation. So let's say you have a V8 engine. Well, you can run on one cylinder, or you can run on eight cylinders, or you can run on any combination of cylinders in between. Uh, so that's kind of the beauty of this is it allows you to run on any number of cylinders uh, and it's the theoretical limit of what cylinder deactivation can be and how it can improve uh, your vehicle's fuel economy through cylinder deactivation. So how does it work first of all? And the way we're going to discuss is by closing off the intake and the exhaust valves. And there are many ways to, you know, stop an intake or exhaust valve from working. Uh, but we're going to be talking about this one here uh, using a locking pin. And so essentially we've got our cylinder, which is going to be right here. Here's our intake valve. There'll be this sy similar system for both the intake and the exhaust valve. So you'll be blocking off both of them uh, on command for each individual cylinder. And so what's going on is you've got your camshaft like normal, and then you have this DX activation arm and so when it's normally operating as that camshaft rotates there's a locking pin which acts as a hinge and you press down on that deactivation arm and it opens up your intake valve nothing uh, fancy there now oil pressure is what's keeping that locking pin in place and then when you want to deactivate this cylinder completely and it can do this in real time so it says you know okay the next cylinder that's going to fire is this one do I want to fire it yes or no and then it'll use this pin uh, to determine whether or not it's going to and so you'll have oil that will come in through this passageway right here. It will press that pin back. So now it's no longer holding up that deactivation arm. So now as your camshaft rotates and it hits that deactivation arm, it pushes it down without pushing the valve down. So it comes down here, uh, pivoting more towards where the, the valve is rather than pivoting where the pin is. Uh, so you don't open up that valve. And as a result, you do not fire that cylinder. And again, this can be done in any combination with any of the cylinders that you have. You only use as many cylinders as you need. So if you're cruising down the highway and you really only need the power from two cylinders, you only use two cylinders. And also because this can, you know, dynamically change which cylinder is firing, it can actually choose an order of firing that makes sense in order for the engine to be well balanced. So versus traditional cylinder deactivation uh, control methods where you may just use four cylinders or eight cylinders, uh, this is actually going to provide you better balance and better fuel efficiency. Now looking at a four cylinder as an example, why is it more efficient to run on one cylinder than running all four cylinders for the same amount of power needed? So let's say you need to produce 25 horsepower. Why is it more efficient to run one cylinder than four cylinders, each producing less than 25 horsepower uh, versus one producing all of that 25 horsepower? Well, the reason, the main reason is it comes down to having a significant reduction in pumping losses operating with just that single cylinder. And so if you think about it from a throttle standpoint, if you're just running on one cylinder, your throttle is going to be pretty wide open in order to get enough air for just that one cylinder. Versus if you're running a bunch of different cylinders, you don't need all that much air because you have all four of them operating. So your throttle is going to be, you know, relatively closed in comparison to our example over here. And with that throttle closed, it, mean your, it means your engine has to work harder to pull in that air. So the pumping work uh, that an engine is doing, essentially the pumping losses, is a function of you know, the pressure of the exhaust minus the pressure of the intake uh, multiplied by volume. And so looking at it as a function of you know, the pressure at the exhaust and the pressure at the intake, if you can have that intake pressure really high, as you can see, this number here will decrease. That means your pumping losses are less. Or if you can have your uh, exhaust gases, your exhaust pressure really low, then that means this number here is also lower, so your pumping losses are lower. So that means you're maximizing the amount of energy. If you get all of that pressure turned into useful work, when you open up the exhaust valve, there's no pressure left to push out. Of course, that's not realistic, uh, but that's the ideal version. 
And then same with the intake. If your engine doesn't have to work very hard to pull in that air because the pressure outside of it is already really high, then it's going to operate more efficiently. And so that's the huge benefit with using just a single cylinder uh, and having that throttle open so you reduce your pumping losses and you don't have to have as much uh, pumping work required versus having that throttle partially closed. It's actually acting, you know, a lot like a damper in a way where it's requiring energy. It's putting heat into the air as you pull it through. Uh, requires that engine to work harder to do it. Another reason is by operating at low loads, it's actually not as efficient uh, from a, you know, within the cylinder, how much heat is rejected to those cylinder walls. So you're not creating as much heat in each of those individual cylinders, but the percentage of that heat that is lost to the cylinder walls is greater when you're operating at low load conditions rather than when you're operating at higher load conditions. Engines operate more efficiently at higher loads, uh, but of course you're using more fuel and you're creating more power when you do that. So by deactivating several of the cylinders, you're creating a smaller amount of power, you're not creating uh, as much efficiency losses, and you're operating so you're getting better fuel economy uh, while maintaining the power that you need. Now, as mentioned, the more cylinders you have, the more effective this becomes. So let's say you have 16 cylinders, uh, but you only need a little bit of power. Well, that means if you're running all 16 cylinders, your throttle is going to be nearly closed. So your pumping losses are huge and you're running all 16 of those cylinders versus if you're running just a single cylinder out of those 16, uh, your, you know, your pumping losses are very low and your efficiency is greater. The other thing is because you are closing off the valves uh, using cylinder, these valve deactivations for both the intake and the exhaust, in the cylinders that aren't firing, you don't have pumping losses because you're not actually moving any air through it. Uh, so that's another advantage of using a system like this where you deactivate it by deactivating the valves so you don't have those pumping losses associated going through those cylinders which aren't firing. Now, what does this mean for fuel economy and for emissions? Well, Delphi is saying that you can expect 7 to 15% reduction in CO2 emissions and a 10 to 20% improvement in fuel economy. And, you know, this number will be larger depending on the size of the engine. Smaller four-cylinder engines aren't going to see as much of an improvement as bigger V8s, V12s, things like that. So now that you all understand how it works, you can let me know in the comments that because it's complicated, it will fail, it's unreliable, it's a dumb idea, all those kinds of things. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.